What's cracking lacking folks? It is Hulu here and today I'm going to be talking about high ground versus low ground. I'm going to quickly go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of both high ground and low ground. But before we jump into anything, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So high ground. The biggest disadvantage of high ground is a large opportunity for third parties. If you're the one sitting at the top, you can get third partied from so many angles. And of course, if you get third partied and knocked down, you will number one, probably lose a lot of health, and number two, have the potential to take a large amount of fall damage. So the biggest enemy, enemy of high ground is fall damage. That's the, that is the one downside. So you have to be careful not to go too high. In most situations, you don't need to be more than one or two levels above the person you're fighting in order to get a lot of damage off them. Although in a solo squad situation, if you're three or four levels higher, then you can easily pop up some quick AR shots or even some combat shotgun shots on the unsuspecting victims of the squad as they try and push you. So the biggest advantages of having high ground is that it's really easy damage when people are trying to build up to you but they're not placing cones, walls and floors above them or in ways that can pro protect them from you. So you can get so many different angles when you're sitting on high ground and if it's a 4v1 in a solo squad situation and you've got the high ground, there's always going to be someone you can shoot. You're never going to have everyone where you can't get an angle on them. From high ground you can also more easily isolate opponents because what happens in a squad is they don't all have the same level of abilities. So one of them might be a really good builder and can build up to the high ground very quickly. So you can isolate that person and try and take them in a 1v1 instead of it being a 1v4 because the other three squad members are still trying to build their way up. Once you've taken out um, that person, more often than not, the best builder in the squad will also be the best player. Which means that if you take them out in the 1v1 before or any of the other players has even got a chance to join the fight, it's going to make your job a lot easier as a solo squad. Once again, in a scream scenario or in a solo scenario, most people don't think to either look up high in endgame, so you can pop a few quick shots or protect themselves from height, so you can always get damage from above. The other thing is that even in a solo scenario, it is easier to get the headshots if you're looking down on the player from above. You're more likely more often than not to do more damage to them than they are doing to you from the low ground. Although there are definitely exceptions to every rule. So the other advantage of high ground is you can do moves like the Tfue Classic, which is where you jump, shoot, build, jump, shoot, build, and they can never really hit you. And you always are hitting them, but they're not doing as much damage to you because you can block their shot, you shoot, block their shot, you shoot, repeat. It's a great high ground advantage move that you can use if you have the high ground. And you can block off enemies and prevent them from gaining high ground. You can um, often rotate more easily from high ground. High ground is definitely an advantage. And if you have high ground, if you have high ground, I think it's almost always an advantage unless you are getting sprayed out from the third party position. So what I mean is if you're sitting on top of someone's box or you're one level higher, they're gonna shoot you before they shoot the person below you. Because more people can see you and more people know where you are, what you do. I mean, if you see someone on top of a build fight, you're usually gonna try and hit them. Okay, so playing the low ground, the biggest advantages from this position are you can turtle up and I've gotten away from so many fights simply by hiding on the low ground in a box, turtled up, when no one came looking and eventually the other players who I was fighting, it would, it would usually not be a 1v1. If it was a 1v1 situation, I would almost always take the fight. But if I was outnumbered, I was being third partied, I would just drop to the bottom of the build fight, take the low ground, turn it up. No one's really gonna come hunting for you unless they know that you're either low health or you're weak, or um, they think you're afraid of them. They think that you're, they're a much better player and it's an easy kill. So when you're, on the low ground, you want to be playing really defensive in that box. You don't want to be standing out in the open because that's when high ground really has the advantage. If you're just sitting in a box, then I then they either have to one try and spray you out from above, which if as long as a turbo building shouldn't be a problem. They might get one or two very lucky shots off, but that probably won't happen. I mean, it usually doesn't. And the other thing is, is that when they're spraying down from above, their aim actually because of bloom. 
it, it gets worse and worse. So once they destroy your roof, you can quickly pop off a shot, do more damage, and then build to protect yourself again. Because if they're just spraying their bloom, bloom widens and widens and widens, and eventually they're not never gonna hit you. And then they have to reload. So there's a high chance that you can actually win a 1v1 from the low ground. Because what happens, if you're the one in the box, you can just wait. As long as you've got mats, you can just wait and wait and wait and wait. And they can just keep trying to break into your walls, keep trying to break in. You can edit out from one of the sides, shoot them. Or you can just sit in your box and wait for that opportunity when someone else third parties the fight and then you can edit out and kill the person who you were originally fighting or you can just wait till the right perfect opportunity when the other player gets a bit lazy and you can just pop out and shoot them. That's the most important part of staying on the low ground. You need to always be vigilant, always remain watching what the opponent's doing and then as soon as they have that split second where they are trying to break your wall and they're like yeah I'm going to pickaxe this side you can just edit out uh, the window or edit out completely and go for the shot. Or when they're trying to break in from above and you've got the right moment where you just edit the floor, the roof that they're standing on, and they fall into your box, place a ramp over them and trap kill them. So the biggest disadvantage from low ground is that it can be quite hard to rotate is the first one. So in scrims, it can be really difficult. Um, if you don't have mats, the low ground is the best option because you can try and hide under other people's builds. But we've... Um, in hilly terrain, the low ground can be really difficult to rotate from and it can be really hard if you're on the low ground and you're trying to climb up a hill as the zone's moving up the hill and everyone else is too. There is so many people who die in those situations. Whereas the people who are sitting on the top, they can last a lot longer because they can either just simply drop down or they can maintain high ground and move up the hill on top of everyone else and shoot down from above. But the low ground, there is a very low chance of you actually winning an outnumbered situation. So a 1v2 or a solo squad, it's gonna be really difficult for you to win those battles simply because you can so easily get sandwiched from the low ground. All there has to be is one person from above, one person from the side, and you're gone. Or one person from above, one person below. It's going to be so difficult to turbo build both of those and stop them from taking a wall or taking a roof or taking a floor. So what you're going to have to do is, if you're in that situation, is desperately go for higher ground. Edit out the side and try and push up for higher ground so that you can hopefully isolate one of them and take it as a 1v1 and then another 1v1 instead of a 1v2 at the same time. Especially with the drum gun back in the game, they're just gonna be spraying you, the mini gun. I've had so many situations where I've had four people spraying me with drum guns or mini guns or whatever. I've lost a fair few games because I was on the low ground and I just got completely sprayed out from above. So that is the biggest disadvantage from low ground. Although, it usually does use less mats. So if you are being more conservative on mats, then definitely stick on the low ground. What I try to do in scrims at least is stick on the low ground until I know that it's the, the third or fourth last zone and then I'll try and take height and sit at height for the rest of the game or sit at about a medium height because when there's still 40 or 30 people left in the lobby, you don't want to be wasting your mats then and building up for high ground then. But that's just my opinion. Everyone plays a bit differently. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. There will be more videos like this coming out. So comment down below what you want to see, what you want me to comment on. I will be doing another video about when you should take fights and when you shouldn't in screams and just in regular gameplay as well. Subscribe, like. Hulu is out. Bye.